Welcome everyone to the Moisky News for February the 22nd, 2021. Today I was going to do a response video to a free speech bill, but I may well have to hold on to that until Friday. Instead, we're going to talk about what was announced today. Boris Johnson has announced the stages, steps that will be taken to get England out of lockdowns. With this come consequences, and many of us are sat here twiddling our thumbs because some people have been left behind. The current rules. You cannot leave your home to meet people from anyone outside your support bubble, basically those you don't live with. You can exercise on your own or with one other person. You shouldn't meet up with people you do not live with, and you must stay two metres apart from anyone not within your household. There are more. There are fixed penalties of £200 for first offence, doubling all the way up to 6400 There are reasonable excuses for not being in your home, work, volunteering, essential activities, education, childcare, exercise, medical, harm and compassionate, animal welfare, and communal worship and life events. There are more detailed analyses on these. My view is, and I'm going to say this now, I think I can speak for the majority of the United Kingdom when I say we are done with this. Let us go back to work. We're sick of you guys controlling us, and we're looking forward to voting you out. So what has Boris Johnson announced? Four tests for every stage of easing lockdown. The first test, the vaccine deployment program continues successfully. Currently, the United Kingdom has vaccinated 25%. I do want to insert this now. The word vaccine is used inaccurately. It does not vaccinate you against coronavirus. That is a misuse of the word vaccine. Since that is one hell of a segue that could well lead me on to a 20-minute rant about the word vaccination and the vaccinations, air quotes, being offered, I'm going to go back on topic. So the vaccine deployment program continues successfully. The next stage, evidence shows vaccines are sufficiently effective in reducing hospitalizations and deaths in those vaccinated. Infection rates do not risk a surge in hospitalizations which would put unsustainable pressure on the NHS. You mean that entity that's always under immense pressure. If someone sneezes, the next day we get an article from random tabloid saying the NHS is stretched thin because of a surge in sneezing. And finally, the assessment of the risks is not fundamentally changed by new variants of concern. I believe now it's being attributed to South Africa and Brazil. I keenly await the impoverished, crude oil-riddled Venezuelan brand. With these four tests, we then go on to the stages, and they've been given time frames. So on March the 8th, all schools will be expected to open, even though unions are saying, fuck you. People could be allowed to meet in a public space with another person. Care home residents in England can have one regular visitor. Care homes and the residents of those care homes have suffered greatly because of this. Mental health is surprisingly important, and yet it has been put to a side, and people have struggled to adapt without the additional comfort of people in their lives. Who would have believed it? Humanity is a social creature. On March the 29th, outdoor gatherings of either six people or two households will be permitted. Outdoor sport areas, like tennis courts, could reopen. Organised adult and children's sports could also return. Travel outside a local area could be allowed. Could is a very strange word. No mention of gyms yet, though. One of the lowest infection rates, and yet they're not mentioned here. How strange. In fact, schools were the highest, at over 40%. In April, non-specified date, non-essential retail stores expected to open. So yes, expect the tarps to be removed from the clothes section of your local Asda. In May, non-disclosed date, pubs, bars and restaurants expected to reopen, even though pubs were also quite low on the infection rate. So were bars, restaurants and hotels for that matter. But again, schools first. June, rule of six indoors could be lifted. And in July, life could be, air quotes, broadly back to normal, end air quotes, by July. As we're in July, you don't need to put by July in that same bracket. You absolute melt. On the screen are the current infection numbers. Okay, well I've done looking at those now. These are the current 
deaths. Now, these numbers are contested. They are contested because people attribute it to COVID because the person who died had COVID. Therefore, they are inaccurate. They will always be inaccurate and they will be contested. Currently, the United Kingdom is ahead of every other nation in Europe. Most countries, in fact, when it comes to vaccinations. It is believed by the end of March, anyone over the age of 40 will have had the vaccine. Over 25% of adults have had a vaccination. They will continue this process and they believe that within the next couple months, they will have everyone from the age of 30 and up, the most vulnerable especially. There is an additional issue when it comes to minority backgrounds, where many are predominantly within those communities rejecting vaccinations. They are well within their right to reject a vaccination if they don't want it. You just have to be certain it is an informed decision, nothing more. There is also the belief that if you have a majority share who are vaccinated, then you've created a support bubble around those who haven't. Again, though, it is contested. And just to give this some scope as to how well Boris Johnson prepared compared to other nations, in Europe, Germany, France, Italy, Spain and Poland put together, who have the highest vaccination count in Europe put together, are still lower than the United Kingdom. But no one's thinking globally, right? Oh well. As we're done, I'd like to know what you all think. Please do let me know in the comments down below. Have a fantastic day. Thank you all very much for listening.